So now that we have routes pretty well covered, let's go ahead and move into cleaning up our route definition file here by actually extracting our route definition route handlers out of the route definition itself and into what's known as a controller. So controllers are essentially a way for us to keep our route file clean, easy to scan, and to the point. So with controllers, we can take these route handlers, as I have highlighted here, and move those into a particular class that we can then reference in place of the actual route handler within the route definition. So by default, Adonis will look for controllers within the app directory underneath controllers underneath another folder called HTTP. Now there's a distinction here with HTTP because these controllers are specifically for HTTP requests, which is most likely going to be the case you're gonna to need to handle, especially starting out. There's a distinction here between HTTP controllers because an alternative you may need is something like a WebSocket controller. And by having the naming this way, you're able to distinguish whether a controller is for a WebSocket or an HTTP request via the different folder structure here. So if you had WebSocket controllers that you needed to have, you could have them within app controllers, WebSocket, and then whatever those controller names are for the HTTP, they will be within app controllers, HTTP. So that's why that distinction is there. Now, if we take a look at this very basic test controller that we have defined, you'll see that it's nothing more than a default exported class. And whenever you create a new controller using the ACLI, this is what it will look like unless you specify it as a resourceful controller. Now we haven't actually covered resources yet. We're gonna be doing that here in a couple of lessons, but to give you a grand overview of it, essentially a resource is a group of routes and route handlers that handle a specific resource. So in this case here, Adonis has an example where they're handling the resource of posts. So post is the resource. And what a resource controller does is it will define a route handler for an index method, a create method, store, show, edit, update, and destroy. And then conversely, you would also have route definitions for all of those as well. And Adonis provides this resource functionality to allow you to create these routes and route handlers nice, quick, and easily. So if you don't specify a controller as a resourceful controller, you'll be given a clean lane class. If you do define it as a resourceful controller, as we're going to need for our posts here, you'll be stubbed with a method for each one of those resourceful route handlers that you would need. So let's go ahead and dive into the ACLI here within our terminal and take a look at what we actually need to create a controller. So let's do node ace make controller, which is the command that we'll use to actually make the controller. And let's just do hyphen hyphen help to take a look at the options. So you can see that make controller takes a name as its only argument, and it also has two additional flags, which we can use to define it as a resource, which would then stub all of the methods for the resourceful routes, which we just talked about. And it also takes an exact flag as well, which we'll take a look at here in a second. So for our posts, we're going to want that to be a resourceful controller. So let's go ahead and do node ace make controller. We can name this post and we can do either hyphen hyphen resource or just hyphen R to signify that this will be a resourceful controller. Now, if you note the name of the file that was just created, you'll see it's called posts controller. This is something Adonis does for you out of the box to help keep things consistent within your code base. Controller names are plural, model names are singular, things like that. So Adonis is going to manage that for you automatically. That's what this second exact flag is for. If you don't like that and you would prefer to specify a exact name, you can pass that exact flag and Adonis won't touch anything with the file name. It will create it just as you defined it. So we can make another post controller and instead provide the exact flag. And you'll see now Adonis has created another controller file just called post exactly as I defined it. Now I actually don't have a need for that second controller, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete it. So now if we take a look at our post controller, which remember we marked as a resourceful controller, you'll see that Adonis created our post controller, which is a export defaulted class with each one of those methods named for our resource. So we have index, create, store, show, edit, update, and destroy. Note that it's called destroy and not delete. Another thing to note here is that we are importing and defining the parameters for these methods as the HTTP context contract. Now, if we take a look back at our route definition route handlers, you'll see that we're not doing that at all. And that's because in this case, Adonis is able to provide that this is going to be an HTTP context contract object type for TypeScript to be able to defer. So if we try to extract something else out of here, say maybe a request we're gonna get IntelliSense support with that. 
Adonis is not able to do that whenever we're working with controllers at this present point in time. So a workaround for that, and it's something that's really easy to do, especially if you define your controllers as resourceful controllers, is to import the type and define that manually for those parameter types. So you'll see as we type here, we get that IntelliSense support as well. So that's also a small thing to note as a difference between your route definition route handler and a controller route handler. And so now the way that we actually move the route definition route handler from the route definition into the controller is by, let's clean this up so that we can see both of them at the same time, cutting it out of the route definition and moving it into the controller. So in this case, since we're not using an error function, I'll need to explicitly return and then return whatever it is I need from the controller. And then on the flip side within the route definition here, instead of having an async callback or a callback of any type, we need to define the controller and the method within that controller that we want to use for this route definition. So here we would provide a string called posts controller and Adonis will default to looking within the app controllers HTTP directory for this controller dot whatever method we want to run. So in this case, it would be index and Adonis will look up our post controller and it will use the index method off of that post controller using this object string notation. So if we were to save both of these files, go back into Insomnia and execute this endpoint, you'll see we get back the exact same response that we would have if we had to find this directly within the route definition. And so now we can go ahead and do that for all of these post routes. So here we have show. So we would plop that one within the show method on our post controller. And then this one also needs params, so we can extract that out of our HTTP context object. Okay, and then we need to define the both controller, so posts controller dot show. And then we can do the same for store. So we can move creating a post from our store route handler method into our post controller and tell this route definition to use the posts controller dot store method. And then we could do the same thing for update. And update also needs params as well. And then tell this route handler to use the posts controller dot update method. And then we could do the same for delete or destroy. Remember it's called destroy, not delete. We can return back that. And then in this case, we're showing that we can use our HTTP context as just a plain object instead of extracting particular properties out of it. And we could do the same thing here within our controller as well. So we just get rid of the object and instead define the actual variable name that we want the HTTP context to have, in this case, CTX. So we can give this a save and then go back and tell destroy to use posts controller dot destroy. And now we're good to go ahead and test all of those. So we've already verified that the index method works. Uh, let's go ahead and test our show. So there we can see get a single post with an ID of number. We, so that one's working. Uh, we can test our store. So that would be a post without a parameter. Creating a post. So that seems to be working. We can test our put to update, which does need a parameter. Updating a post with an ID of one. And lastly, delete. And there we go, deleting a post with an ID of one. So all of these are working a-okay. And you can see just by these post route definitions, just how much extracting the route handlers out of the route definition itself and into controllers helps cut back the jargon, the mess from our route file. And it really takes away the need to have separate files for your routes, unless you're having hundreds of routes to, to uh, deal with. Now, something that's pretty common within applications, especially ones dealing with posts, uh, is to have an administrative panel where the logged in user has more powers than say a normal user just visiting the application, maybe not even authenticated. Um, in those cases, it's really good to extract the different functionalities for the two from one another. So in those cases, you might wanna have two different post controllers. You might wanna have the administrative side where the admin can perform duties on the post and you might want to have a user facing side where a user might not even need to be authenticated in order to use the posts. So the public facing side would probably be more for reading and maybe counting views or things like that. And the administrative side would be for creating, updating, deleting, uh, purging stuff, things like that. Um, so in those cases, it would be really good to keep your controllers separate. So there's a couple of ways that you can go about that with Adonis. You can either create a second controller called admin post controller, or you can use namespaces, which helps keep things a little bit more clean. 
So let's go ahead and copy these post routes here. And I'm going to take them out of the app group. And I'm gonna instead place them within another group. So let's do route.group. And there we go. And for this group, we're going to place it inside of a namespace. Now you can separate out the namespace however you like. You can either do app admin controllers HTTP. You can do app controllers HTTP admin and then have the controllers within there. Whatever your preference is, I tend to prefer the latter. So let's go ahead and cover both of those. So let's go ahead and make our controller again within our terminal. So let's do node ace make controller. And instead of just doing posts controller or post controller or post and allowing Donis to rename it, we'll want to define the namespace ahead of it if we are doing it as app controllers HTTP admin post controller. So in this case, we could do admin post. We'll define this as a resourceful controller as well. And you'll see that Adonis now creates this within app controllers HTTP admin post controller. And if we take a look, now we have an admin folder within our HTTP folder containing another post controller. We can either prefix all of these post controllers with admin, which is a valid option, or we can define a namespace on the route group. So we could do dot namespace and then provide it a path from the root of our application to the namespace that we want these controllers to use. So in this case, it's gonna be app controllers, HTTP and admin. So now if we save this, we'll also want to give this namespace a prefix so that we're not colliding with these post routes of admin, give this a save and Let's go ahead and place an route handler for our index method just so that we can test that it's working. And we'll do admin get all posts. And we'll go back into insomnia and we'll do a get request for slash admin slash posts. And we should see admin get all posts, which we do. So that's how you can namespace that way. Um, now, if you did want it to be app admin controllers HTTP, uh, you'd need to kind of, to my knowledge, manually move that around and create those folders, which is no big deal. So here we would do controllers and then here we would do HTTP. Oops, meant to do folder, new folder, HTTP, and then move this within there. Okay, and then instead of having app controllers HTTP admin, we just move this admin to just after app. So we can give that a save, head back into Insomnia, test it out, and you'll see it works just like a charm. Okay, so that gets us started with controllers. Uh, in the next lesson, we'll take a look by expanding on resourceful routes and resourceful controllers and taking a look at the options that we have there and various ways that we get to find them. Mm -hmm.